All right, so uh, we've made it to another booth, and we are here with Thomas Washburn, who is the author of a, uh, a movie we are going to shoot in the summer of 2018, spring of 2018, called Chum. And Thomas, I'd love to know how you came about this story and, and you know, how we're going to treat this for your, for your short movie. Um, I've always been fascinated with the coast. My family originally owned Guts in Swans Island back in the day, bought it off the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for 80 gold pieces, whatever grandfather. So I've always had a weird connection with the coast. And I'm a fisherman myself too, I like to fish. And I found that... Uh, I've always been fascinated of an idea or something like that, you know, with yeah. some guy like, what, you, you know, because every old fisherman you run into always has their secret they, that they, they won't do, tell, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to put a sick, in, you know, I'm going to put a sick twist on this, so what's going on? And that's pretty much how the story came about. No, it's a neat story. It's going to be a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah. I, I'm from, I'm from NBI. So oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I, I totally get it. And we may, in fact, use some of the resources that I have down there for fisherman friends and maybe yes. some of the stuff that they have just because it would be very per perfect for the setting. Oh yeah, yeah. That whole location area yeah, that's great. and that's what I had in mind when I created the fictional town of Blue Ridge. Yep. It was like, you know, a mix mash of like MDI Bar Harbor, Ellsworth, um, you know, Swans Island, Gotts Island, you know, Cranberry Island, all those places. That's kind of what I had in mind yeah, when I originally sound, it sounds like that in reading the story too. I mean it, it just feels personal because that's my home as well. Yeah. That's where I'm from. And I think for Maine, I think a lot of Mainers will can relate to it because we all know somebody like that. That has that air of mystery about him, the grouchy old man in town that is always really good at stuff, but he's like, you know, he's carmudgeon. He wants everybody to get off his damn lawn and leave yeah. him alone. He's unapproachable. <laughs> you can't talk to him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, like, uh, it's like Tim Sample said at the show I saw one of his. Everybody in Maine has a truck. Pretty much, and yeah. If, and if you don't have a truck, you know somebody with a truck. It's a phone call away. Yeah, it's just, the, <laughs> just the way it is. No, it's 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 going to be a lot of fun to do this. I'm I'm excited about it, and I know Shane is. And I think we'll be able to do a neat treatment for your story. Oh, I'm excited. I I got to read the screenplay and. You know, Shane wanted to make sure I was cool with all the changes and stuff, and I loved what he did because it's such a narrative story in the book that the changes he made really, uh, really makes like an ex example of that, that, you know, Freddie Ricker as a character, and it brings that out so people can see it in not just a silent form, you know. I think that's one of the things Shane actually does really well, and one of the things we've worked together for four years now. And he's so interested in characters. And I think that's one of the things, I mean, really, if you look at stories, that's the driving force in every way. And Shane likes to make it so the character is memorable. And they have personality, and that's, yeah. and that's, and I think he's very good at that from everything that I've seen, you know, from Sleep Eater and, and Blind Date and all, it, it, he makes, characters that people can relate to or in my case of adapting my story he turned a character that maybe you just don't like the guy and then but he brought out like he brought out a personality out right. of that so, character that may not be on the, yeah. yeah yeah and I and I really enjoyed that yeah and by the way he keeps me locked in the basement and beats me with a stick and it's paying me to say this or I don't get to eat this week so you and I must be thinking the same thing <laughs> I was just gonna say that is way too much nice talk about Shane <laughs> No, although it is a pleasure working for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I get to have my biscuit and gravy tonight. <laughs> well, Thomas, thank you very much. It really is I'm looking pleasure. forward to working with you guys great. and seeing you on the set. And look, looking forward to my cameo. So, <laughs> yes. Every writer wants to have a cameo and something that's being adapted in there. So. We're going to make him famous both ways. <laughs> Old Freddy Ricker sat upon his lucky rock near the ocean's edge just like he did every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. This had been his routine for nearly ten years straight. He rarely ever missed one of these days, even if the weather was bad. Today the wind blew viciously against the shoreline. His thinning gray hair danced back and forth as he watched waves crash against the shore like an attacking behemoth a few feet below him. It was bad, but he had seen much worse. <laughs> 